Visually impressive but generic fantasy and no Lord of the Rings. Hey everyone, let's take a look at Rings of Power. Before I get into this, I want to clarify a few things quickly. Reviewing something means that you take into consideration what the product wants to achieve and you rate it by its success in doing just that. While in the case of movies, you use the same pillars of movie making like writing, character development and world building for all of them, you do not judge a movie like Transformers by the same logic as you would judge something like Schindler's List. This could be the beginning of a new era. With that said, the Rings of Power are not an accurate retelling of Tolkien's stories, and due to the way the licenses are scattered all over the wind, they cannot be. So a lot in this show is entirely made up, and it could have never been any other way. This show is not a prequel or a complement to Jackson's movies. This is a sort of prequel reboot that only borrows some aspects from those movies. So judging this as a piece of Tolkien's legendarium, or as a prequel to Jackson's movies, would simply be unfair, as it never had the chance to be just that. So try to see this as Middle-earth fan fiction, which in essence, it is. And the last point is the politics surrounding it. I usually don't get into the political aspects and only focus on the movie making ones, but it hangs so much over this show like a dark cloud that I will address it very quickly. Rings of Power is overly and unnecessarily woke. Not only does it not align with the source material, but the way it's included in the show, it doesn't highlight or celebrate equality and diversity, but it's pure tokenism. And it can sometimes be so distracting as it simply doesn't make sense from a lore, biological and geographical point of view. But as long as the show is made well, I can go with the flow. So let's take a look if it is. I'll get to the good things first. The visualization of the world is incredible. The art design, cinematography, visual effects and all other visual aspects are brilliantly handled. And in 4K and in HDR, it looks magical at times. You can see how much money and time Amazon has thrown at this. Casa Doom in particular is absolutely beautiful. Bear McCreary's soundtrack absolutely shines and does a great job differentiating the various realms of this world. And the same thing goes for the production design, which creates a different ambiance for the various folks. And they manage to help you understand the geographical aspects of the world by using a 3D map like the one in Game of Thrones' intro. And it's beautiful and pretty helpful to know where you are. Some of the world building is rather good and many of the characters like Nori and Durian are pretty likable and it's proper high fantasy. And now to the not so good things. The writing is pretty generic and cliche. You will hear the standard lines and see the standard typical tropes you've heard and seen before. Nothing much except for the parts that are Tolkien's does a good job of laying out this world or developing the characters. Galadriel is just an absolute pain to watch. She's unrealistically capable, she's reckless, entitled, overly confident, and doesn't care much about anything other than her goal. And she's willing to sacrifice the lives of others in an instant. All those things don't feel very heroic at all. And Morfit Clark, the actress playing her, has massive issues with her performance, and it looks like she had a tough time with Galadriel's portrayal. She's stiff and looks uncomfortable and pissed in most shots. And she seems to have real issues emoting properly in many scenes, with one dialogue with Elrond in particular feeling so incredibly uncomfortable to watch that it didn't only tear me out of the scene, but actually made me wish for it to be over, and that happens rarely. Honestly, at that moment I felt sorry for her. Something is really off with this version of Galadriel. Darkness will march over the face of the earth. As for the story so far, it's nothing but setup after setup after setup, which makes sense if they want to create a story arc over multiple seasons, which is probably why they released the first two episodes together. But I really hope that they can move ahead with some proper story development. Away I must wander this wandering day. In conclusion, Rings of Power is, in essence, Tolkien fan fiction that was created in order to navigate the stupid licensing landscape it's in and also pander to as large an audience as it can, and has become a generic high fantasy show that also features elements of Tolkien's material. This show has nothing to do with Jackson's movies, and barely anything with Tolkien's legendarium, and I sincerely doubt it was ever meant to. If you go into this as another extension of the world you love and have grown up with, 
you will surely be disappointed. If, on the other hand, you look at this as a generic fantasy show set in Middle Earth, it can be an enjoyable bit of entertainment with an astounding level of production value. So let's hope the story finally starts moving and that Galadriel's character gets a hold of herself, as the way it is, she's a massive detriment to the show. But you need not wait for that day to hear my voice. And that's it for the first two episodes. I will do a proper review when the season is over, and until then, what do you think of Rings of Power? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this look at the first two episodes, consider liking, subscribing, and turning on the notifications. And with that said, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.